frankly, uh, it has been a uh, well-known fact, uh, though only in the form of rumor, that uh, there has been a great deal of uh, apprehension at my being out of the black Muslim movement on the part of the black Muslims themselves. And I had uh, stated in a newspaper article about an effort to take my life back in January, and at that time the Muslims denied it. In fact, they tried to make it appear to my brother that I was insane. But on a program in Chicago called Hotline, was moderated by Wesley South, John Ali, the national secretary, admitted, uh, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, one of these days last week, that they absolutely were going to kill me. Why are they threatening your life? Well, uh, Primarily because they're afraid that I will tell the real reason that they've been that I'm out of the black Muslim movement, which I never told. I kept to myself. But the real, real reason is that Elijah Muhammad, the head of the movement, is the father of eight children by six different teenage girls, different uh, six different teenage girls who were his private personal secretary. Uh, four of them had one child apiece by him. Uh, two of them had two children, and one of those two is pregnant right now in Los Angeles uh, with their uh, third child. And uh, the, the one who first made me aware of this was Wallace Muhammad, Mr. Muhammad's son. And it was uh, their fear that uh, if I remained in the black Muslim movement, and this came into the knowledge of his followers, that they would leave him and follow me. So uh, a, a plan immediately was set in motion to uh, take me down, put me out, and uh, the statement that I allegedly made, or not that I allegedly made, I did make it, the statement that I made about Kennedy was used as a, a pretext to take me down. But in reality, it was, the, it was because I had come to New York and told Joseph, the captain in New York, and uh, the secretary and the minister in Boston about these children that Mr. Muhammad had. And it was that, that right there was the real reason for my being out of the movie. If what you get steps will you take to protect yourself from this threat? I take no steps. I have a rifle. If anybody comes to my house without a good reason, I, I intend to try and use it. Uh, and that's all. Oh, yeah, you can hear it. All right. Minister Malcolm, when you broke with Elijah Muhammad back in March, you said it was because the black Muslims were too narrowly sectarian and inhibited and because Elijah Muhammad had become blindly jealous of you and the personal following you had gathered. Mm -hmm. that, that, I said the first part, but the last part, I didn't say that Elijah Muhammad himself had become blindly jealous. I mentioned that it was his family and the officials in Chicago. Everything that I said always was designed to protect Mr. Muhammad himself, primarily because the image that he had created uh, was the image that enabled his followers to remain strong in faith and things of that sort. And I didn't want to see any uh, adverse effect or negative result uh, develop um, in the faith of all of his followers. Mm -hmm. But actually, uh, despite the fact that I tried to protect the Muslim movement, if you'll notice, they uh, used their newspaper to slander me and to label me as a hypocrite and uh, as a rebel. And Mr. Muhammad himself said that I defected. Well, in reality, I never even left the Muslim movement. They put me out. And they put me out because of what I knew. And what I knew was told to me by Mr. Muhammad's son, uh, Wallace Muhammad himself. They put me out and they put him out. Well, now, first of all, let's find out what it is that Wallace Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad's son, told you. Well, uh, number one, if you notice, the, the stick that I always used in presenting, representing, and defending the Muslim movement was the fact that it had the ability, re ability to reform the morals of the so-called Negro community. It eliminated drug addiction, alcoholism, uh, fornication, adultery, loose sex, sexual behavior, which meant that uh, it eliminated bastard babies, illegitimate children. Well, as long as I knew that this was what it represented and it gave me a strong stick, I could represent it and defend it. But uh, we had a law which... Uh, meant, which means, which was, that uh, whenever any uh, Muslim became involved in any kind of sexual relationship with someone to whom they weren't married, that person would be brought before the Muslim community, humiliated, and then isolated for from one to five years. This was our law. Well, uh, in 1954, a teenage sister left Detroit 
and became one of Mr. Muhammad's personal secretaries. And uh, there in the Chicago office, she became pregnant after being there for a year. And uh, she was brought before the Muslim community and humiliated and isolated. And uh, a, year, a year later, another secretary, this time one from uh, Lansing, Michigan, uh, came to Chicago. She also became pregnant. She was brought before the community and humiliated and isolated. And because the other person was never brought forth during this uh, court session, it was uh, concluded by all of Mr. Muhammad's followers that it was a non-Muslim who was the other party. Well, we grew so rapidly until that in 1957 or 58, the uh, secretarial staff was expanded to, I think, eight teenage sisters. In 1959, six of them disappeared. Two of them reappeared in Philadelphia about two or three months later, and they were all right. Uh, the other four reappeared in 1960. All four of them had babies. All four of them had uh, become involved with someone and become pregnant and had these children. So it was, uh, from what I now know, when the four of them got back to Chicago and began to compare notes, they found that the same man had told all of them the same story and had made all of them pregnant, that the same man was the father of all four of their children and had also been the father of the ch children brought forth by the two secretaries who preceded them. Mm -hmm. So this story was kept among these sisters until 1962. Two of them rebelled uh, against uh, the person who was responsible and began to tell the story all over the city of Chicago. It caused many of the Muslims in the Chicago mosque to leave and go back out in the street. They knew it, and uh, it, I knew nothing about it until 1963 when um, Mr. Muhammad's son, who had been in prison, uh, came out, and he, was a, he had been a minister, and he was very religious and spiritual, and when he began to hear these rumors around Chicago, he went to one of the sisters, and the sister admitted to him that the rumor was true, and uh, it was he who first told me about it. And when he told me about it, I, took, I wrote to Mr. Muhammad and told him about it, and he admitted that he had a knowledge of it and that uh, he'd given me a religious explanation that would fit into prophecy and all of that, so I was quiet. And it wasn't until October of uh, 1963 that it came up again. And when it came up again, I realized that the same person who had uh, made these other sisters pregnant was still busy doing the same thing. He hadn't stopped. Two of the sisters had two children by the same man. And one of, the two, one of those two sisters was pregnant still, getting ready to have a third child by the same man. So when it was known uh, among the Chicago officials that I had a knowledge of this, they become very fearful of me. They became very antagonistic toward me, and they, they, had, they had to do something to diminish the authority that I had for fear that if this became public knowledge, the followers would leave the Muslim movement and follow me. And it was at that time that they used the statement that I made against President Kennedy as a pretext to cut my authority, and uh, some other things happened that finally uh, produced the split or forced the split. And when I made the split, the only reason that I didn't make this public knowledge was I knew the implications, and I, I felt that if the uh, Muslims who were in the uh, nation of Islam knew it, that which enabled them to be so strongly religious and uh, exercise moral discipline would be shattered, and it would cause all of them to go right back and start doing the things that they had been doing previously. Who is the father of all of these various children whom you have enumerated? Uh, the first one to tell me who the father was was Wallace Muhammad, and he told me that the father was Elijah Muhammad himself. One of the sisters, to, uh, he went to the home of one of the sisters, and when he walked in the door, she said, I want to let you see something. And she uh, showed him her child. She said, here's your brother, and your father is the one, your father is the father of this child. And then I questioned the sisters myself, because it, I was shook up. And they admitted to me that Elijah Muhammad was the father of their children. And I took it to him. And it was at that time he told me that he was Muhammad, the prophet, and that Muhammad had nine wives. He also told me that he was David. He was the modern David, and that he, that he was the modern Solomon, and that he, he was meant, it was meant for him to fulfill today all of the things that they did back there. And how many of these illegitimate children did he father with the sisters? Well, he made uh, six sisters pregnant. They all had children. Two of those six had two children. Uh, uh, one of those two is having a child right now. I am told that there is a seventh sister who is supposed to be in Mexico right now, and she's supposed to be having a child by him. For one thing, when you first separate from your wife, it's a physical separation, but it's not psychological. You still have feelings for her, and you protect her. 
Uh, but after the physical separation has taken place for a while, it becomes a psychological separation. It was the same way with me and the Muslim movement. When I first separated, it was a physical separation. But my feeling was still there. And it was only after my trip uh, into the Muslim world and, and my pilgrimage to Mecca that I really was able to uh, exercise the objective approach to it that enabled me to see that something had to be done to bring this to light. Otherwise, a whole lot of innocent people would be killed needlessly. Well, these revelations that you are now making about Elijah Muhammad, what effect should they have on his following? 